Welcome back to the workshop. Today I want to tackle my arch nemesis of materials. And that is sheet metal. I've made dog poop out of a whole lot of sheet metal projects in the last little while. And failed considerably. There was the Iron Man helmet, there was the Captain America shield. Oh, they didn't even see that part of the failures. <laughs> they didn't even see the failures I made on the Captain America shield. Because it was so appalling that it didn't even make it in the video. But my ability of working with sheet metal is next to non-existent. And we've got to fix it. And we've got to fix it by tackling a project that's incredible. Incredibly difficult, and that's gonna be a project I found on popular internet site YouTuber Gaber, and it's a video by David Guyton titled Make Armor at Home with Ordinary Tools. Gothic Gauntlet. This is gonna be our inspiration for this project. I don't know David Guyton, but we're gonna be following his template available on his website. I really hope that this is a project where I can learn some new skills and we can do something that all of you have been asking for for a very long time, and that is to learn armor making. So learn armor making, we shall! Little what's coming to it which is a little loving with an angle grinder and some tin snips. Today's episode is sponsored by Magic Spoon, and if you had to give up cereal because you thought you needed to be a responsible adult and cut down your sugar consumption, but you miss the childlike joy of opening up a good old box of cereal, reading what's on the back, and tucking into a delicious bowl of it, then Magic Spoon is for you. Each serving has zero grams of sugar, 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs, all adding up only to 140 calories. They got tons of flavors like fruity, frosted, peanut butter, and my favorite, cocoa. You can even play games on the back of the boxes while you're tucking into that absolutely delicious and super nutritional cereal. So please go to magicspoon.com forward slash forge and use code forge to get $5 off your variety pack of Magic Spoon cereal. And they're so confident you'll like it, they've got a 100% money back guarantee. If you don't like it, they'll refund you, no questions asked. Thank you to Magic Spoon for sponsoring this. Let's get back into the video. Now I understand why there is a market for plasma tables. That took all morning. As if cutting it wasn't a laborious enough process, we now need to peel off all the paper that we have super glued to it and, s and hand sand the pieces. Hopefully this won't be too difficult. Oh boy. Well, we've already messed something up. I've got the wrong order already. I actually still need to cut these grooves in with a chainsaw file and then put these grooves on there. And if I peel off the paper, I've got no way of knowing where the grooves need to go. Super gluing paper down is a terrible idea if you ever want the paper and the super glue to be removed at a later point in time. Oh my goodness, we are now uh, bathing pieces in alcohol, soaking them in hot water, scraping them with steel washers, scraping them with scotch brite. <laughs> Who knew the most difficult part of armor making was going to be cutting the pieces out and getting the paper off it at the end? <laughs> Right, we're giving up trying to peel off this super glued stuff. We're gonna do it all again, and Jamie's had a great idea. Check this out. Spraying a little Dykemon, and ta-da! So now I've just gotta scribe these up, and get the Dykemon off there with some alcohol, and polish them up with some scotch Brite. Okie dokie, so, with my laser cutting hands, we're now done cutting bits of steel. Hopefully forever. I think if you tot it all up, that's been about a day's work. <laughs> Best thing ever. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's have a look. So we need a swage. He's using a piece of pipe. We'll get a bit of flat bar, heat it up, and hammer it in the power hammer. Then we're going to take our finger pieces and hammer them down.
All right, so now it looks like we take this swage, put our pieces in there, and then we just got to start bending. We have ourselves some bent finger pieces. So now the next step, according to the David Guyton tutorial, is we need a ball stake, which I have conveniently made. And on these pieces that are gonna be the tips of the fingers, I need to somehow round them over. This is one of your fortes actually, isn't it? Rounding sheet steel. Rounding sheet steel is, is my forte. I'm very good at it. Doing it. So I'm just holding it over the ball, slightly over the peak of the ball, and as I hammer, it's curving around. Super simple. Well, for sure, this template is for somebody that has larger hands than I, so. That's an issue, but it won't be too much of an issue. I'm happy to keep going. The next step is attaching the finger pieces together with a strip of leather. But to do that, we're gonna need holes in everything. So we're just gonna use some ultra basic roofing nails that I found at the hardware store. They have a two millimeter shank. It feels incredibly dangerous. You gotta drill the holes after they're shaped. It's just scary. Everything's going wrong. Chopped it. Chopped it. <laughs> One of the aspects of making things, that, do I have t chicken tikka masala on my face? Okay, that's good, just gotta check. One of the moments that I absolutely love about making things is that moment where all of a sudden, an element of the puzzle all clicks into place and you know the little experiences that you've had and your brain is able to picture something that it wasn't able to picture before and i've had that because looking at these templates i really just had no idea what i was looking at and though i'd seen the video i had no idea what i was looking at when i was looking at my individual steel pieces but now it's all starting to make sense the cutouts on these uh, big knuckle pieces of the fingers the rounding of the tips it's all slowly but surely starting to make sense and this 3d picture is developing in my head and it's that 3D picture which is so important. We're waiting on some leather for these pieces and so for now we have to begin the shaping of these components and like I was describing not being able to picture something in 3D it's very difficult to do it with this. All these pieces are going to be going up my wrist like this I presume but I don't really know what it's going to look like until we start working on them. So I'm going to start with hand number one. I'm going to be taking this chisel, same chisel that I was using to crease things when we were making origami or the paper plane, and a rubber pad. And I think the idea is, on the inside of the pieces, following the scribe lines we made earlier, we make some creases. So I've been running into this issue, which is where the corners of my chisel have been making these more excessive and pronounced little dimples as they've been digging in more than the actual flat itself. So I've gone ahead and ground a big slope off on the edge, which will hopefully mean that we can be a little gentler with the chisel and avoid those pointy bits. Now I'm going to put a bit of round bar in the vise and we're going to form a concavity in between our scribed and chiseled lines. This one millimeter steel bends really easily. Even just over this mandrel we can do a lot with our hands.
Well, I wish I could take an ounce of credit for the fact that this is actually looking quite cool and is actually looking like a gauntlet. But here's the thing, I can't take an ounce, I can't take a gram, can't take a microgram. All the credit is owed to David Guyton because without his template, I would be ruined. So please go subscribe to his channel and let him know about this completely unplanned and unorganized collaboration. And of course, thank you as owed to Magic Spoon for sponsoring this episode. Please check them out down below at the link in the description.